You're listening to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. When your heart is aching and your world is shaking, don't give up. No, no, don't give up. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope, the podcast. I'm your host, Jana Shore, and today I'm here with Marie Benoit. Marie is a trauma coach, health coach, and mindset coach. She helps women with anxiety and gut pain issues flow through their life with confidence and calm. By the way, we're going to talk so much more about what you do, Maria, because she is like a powerful team, and we'll get into all of that later. But first of all, welcome to the show, Marie. Hi. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. I'm really been looking forward for this. By the way, Marie has this beautiful article coming out in our um, November issue called Wealthy Wealthy. And we're spelling that W-E-L-L because I believe wealth doesn't necessarily take the form of money. For me, it does not. So um, I want everyone to be wealthy in whatever it is that like lights their soul on fire. But Marie's here today. And one of the things I ask all of our guests, Marie, is to share their story of hope. Because I think those literally are the heartbeats we put out in the world and create that incredible, sometimes generational change. So do you want to share your story of hope with us? Yeah, I definitely would. Uh, that's what we brought me here to you today. So let's start. Um, it doesn't start out with the best of pictures, but um, I grew up on a farm with my family, basically in the middle of nowhere in Oregon. And it was kind of a picture of perfect life for me for about nine years of my childhood. Um, and then when I was about nine and a half, my do- my father was diagnosed with cancer And um, he shortly passed away when I was around 10. Um, And not only did I have to endure that, but my family uprooted and moved to the city. And um, so what I've realized in the last few years was that I not only lost like that person, that beacon in my in my life, but I uh, lost my community. And so I had a lot of losses that I experienced. Um, And through that experience, I was also bullied (laughs) in my new city, emotional bullied. Um, And so what I experienced is I started to think at first it was like I thought I was going to die, basically. And so my mom taught me, took me to the doctor because I was having a hard time breathing. And this was like, oh, probably 1999, early 2000s. And so the doctor gave me an inhaler. He never mentioned anything about panic attacks. He never brought up my history about what had happened to me with my dad. He just gave me that inhaler basically and said, that'll help. Well, it didn't help. (laughs) My symptoms got a lot worse. Um, Basically, pretty much for 20 years, I would wake up in the morning and I would just dread starting the day and it would come out in the toilet. I would throw up every morning. Um, and I just thought that there was something innately wrong with me. Um, and I thought this was only happening to me and, uh, I felt pretty hopeless for a long time, but there was always this kind of nagging feeling that maybe that's not quite right. Basically, maybe there's nothing to be fixed here. Um, and I've always had this drive in me, um, kind of maybe a stubbornness, that wanted to prove people wrong, wanted to prove myself wrong in a way. Um, And I think I get a lot of that drive from my father because he was a very ambitious man, Um, but he kind of burned out really young because he had health issues, obviously. Um, And so I basically just did everything I could to help myself. And I looked at any kind of possibility that would be helpful. I went to school to be a counselor, basically, and that actually helped me a lot (laughs) because I learned about all these techniques that nobody had ever talked to me about before, like EMDR and tapping. Um, And so I not only use those with clients today, but I did them myself because I had to heal myself. What I realized was that I just didn't feel safe for about two decades in my life. I did not feel safe in my environment. I didn't feel safe in my body. I didn't think it was capable of doing the things that it is today. And because of that, I lacked a lot of confidence in who I was. And um, there was a lot of people pleasing that happened, a lot of just shying away. 
And now in my life, I can say that I can be here talking to you, which I didn't think I would ever be doing because I would never have thought I would have the confidence to do that, basically. But this is something somebody else does, not me. I think that some of the things that you said, I think so many other people can relate to, like not feeling safe in your own body. That sounds odd, but it's the truth. There were, I, I know there's a time when every single one of us experienced that to some degree. And the other thing that I definitely want to talk about with you is people do not connect past traumas, hidden traumas that we aren't even really aware of that have happened and how they correlate to our health and what's going on in our lives. Um, like for instance, your doctor, he, it's not that he did the wrong thing, he was treating a symptom, right? right. So he did yeah. the right thing treating the symptom, but when we get to the root cause and we start making those changes, it's, it's what I call holistic life, right? For me, holistic life is whole life. It's clean, cleaning us up and helping us spiritually, mentally, physically. You know, it's what we eat, what we say, what we do. It's just so much more than an inhaler <laughs> and fixing that problem for every time you have the panic attack, I guess, but not really pulling, out it, pulling it out at the root. So exactly. I love that. And you talk about EMR and tapping. First of all, I do not know what EMR is. EMDR. Yeah, there's a D in there. Good. Yeah. EMDR. Yeah, yeah. So I do not know what EMDR is, but I do know what tapping is, and I use it all the time. I have, believe it or not, the worst fear of speaking in public because I was raised, they don't talk, mm -hmm. you know, be quiet. Nobody wants to hear that. And so I have all this anxiety when I go in and tapping opened a whole new world for me. And whenever I feel that panic attack or I feel like I'm being like, they're all judging me. I'm going to say something stupid. I always have breath work and tapping before I go on stage. And it literally was like a rubber band that you take and pop it. It just like pushed it out of me and out I went. And mm -hmm. I am so comfortable and confident when I do things like that now. So tell us a little bit about what EM, EM, EMDR is and what, and I know what tapping is, but maybe others have never heard of it. Here's a great thing. Once you learn how to do it, it is free and you have access to it all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's an amazing tool. It is an amazing tool. Yeah. I use um, in our program. Um, and by the way, I'm a trauma coach and there's a health coach and a mindset coach. I would love to say I'm all three, but I work with two other beautiful ladies that are those entities. Um, and so I do tapping with my clients um, through the coaching program and because I did it last year. Um, I almost actually died last year, which is another crazy story when I had my daughter and I had PTSD after that, obviously. And so I use tapping as a form of therapy and it changed my life, just like you said. Um, and I didn't have symptoms anymore after six months of just doing tapping, basically. Um, so I love tapping because it's if you have hands or something to use to tap with, basically, you can do it. So it's for everyone, basically. And so what it is, it kind of focuses on it's kind of like acupuncture is it focuses on those prime meridian points in your body. And it's kind of to say that if you could think about like anxiety, like an energy, because like all emotions are, we feel it in our body first, then you can kind of like help relieve that energy and help balance it out basically by using tapping, which is crazy. It's kind of woo woo. It's out there. But I think the woo, -woo kind of therapies are the ones to go for because they're going for your emotional brain. And trauma is not logical. So we cannot talk our way out of feeling bad, basically can't talk our way out of panic. It's not possible. Because we have that other part of our brain that's telling that part of your brain that's trying to talk it out. What are you crazy? This, <laughs> this is scary. I, mm -hmm. you know, I also love that you just talked about um, having PTSD after um, having a baby. And you obviously had a much more traumatic, traumatic birth than most of us do. Um, having said that, I feel like every single woman who's had a child has some form of PTSD. Like I know that I think I don't until I got pregnant again. And then all that anxiety came in. I have no control over how this beautiful child is being developed. Basically, if there's mm -hmm. going to be anything wrong, what sex it is, how I'm going to deliver it. It tells me. And I had a, I panicked at a loss of control. <clears throat> mm -hmm. to, yeah. You can't say, Nope, I'm not doing this today. When they're ready to come, they come. Like you just don't have any control. So I feel like we all have a little anxiety. Yeah. Those and, babies. 
And I like that you said like lack of control because that's how you know that you've experienced trauma is that anytime you feel like you've lost control or you feel helpless. So that's it, basically. I did feel helpless. That's the only time I think in my whole life I've ever really felt helpless was pregnant. Like think about how women walk around, hands like this on their tummy always. They're protecting, like you're, you yeah. feel so helpless. It's instinctual. So much you can do. And so you just pray <laughs> a lot. Right. Like that's the one thing you have control of. But um, I have four children and every single time that feeling, like I didn't feel joy when they told me I was pregnant. I all, all of a sudden felt that anxiety. Like I have no control. I can't do anything I want now. Mm -hmm. I have to be, you know, I'm in the control of other people. And sometimes when you get a new doctor, it's someone you don't know and right. trust, right? So it's, it's a lot. So for all of you who have experienced that, it's okay. It's normal to mm -hmm. experience it. But one of the things I love so much about Marie is that you don't have to. You can talk through that, learn tapping, learn certain skills. And what I had to learn was, I do have control over very specific, I have control over what I eat. I have control over getting some sleep, right? I have mm -hmm. control over taking my supplements. These are all things I can do and I have control over that. So you can figure out what it is you do have control over mm -hmm. and, and like kind of investigate that. But how do you help women through things like this? Yeah. So um, kind of what you're saying, like back to like the root, um, we don't think that anxiety is anything that we want to get rid of or that we, because a lot of times society talks about it in a bad way. Like it gets a bad rap. Like we hate it. We loathe it. We want to get rid of it. It's something bad happening here to us. And anxiety is not personal. And I think like when I teach, like a lot of what I do is just base work is education on what's happening in your body, like the science of anxiety, basically, um, because you realize like everyone has a nervous system and that's kind of the first response. That's your first responder to how you take in the world. And everyone has a sympathetic part of that, which is where anxiety lives. And it's just trying to keep you safe. And sometimes our systems are a little wackadoodle because of what has happened to us in the past. So we're more high geared, hypersensitive to threats in our life. And so we're living more in the past than we are in our present mind, basically. And so that's when a lot of um, overwhelming symptoms will come to us because um, that's how digestive symptoms come out is then when, when we're not tuning in and listening to our anxiety, we'll, it'll start, our bodies will start screaming at us. And my body screamed at me at, through nausea, through headaches, through, uh, you know, feeling like I couldn't breathe a lot of the time. I agree. I think sometimes it does, it manifests in a physical way. Sometimes it manifests in a mental way. I know people who have anxiety issues that are so strong, it freezes them. They literally cannot get out of bed or yeah. function because of all the anxiety <clears throat> over something for me that has never happened. Like I am not a, I don't, I don't stress too much over things that don't happen. I have no control over anymore. That doesn't mean that I didn't when I was younger. <clears throat> it's just something you learn as you get older. Mm-hmm. I worried about that when I was younger it never happened. So I'm not worried about it anymore. It may happen. It may not, whatever it is, I've got it, but that's not necessarily true with everyone. And I feel so helpless in knowing how to help because as a mindset coach, when someone comes to me with trauma like this, I do not work with them. That is not my field of genius. And I know me just telling them, think of something positive. Look at all the great things going on. Don't focus on that is not what they need to hear. There is a real trauma inside mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they need to tap into, work through, and use that to move on in their journey. And so for those of you who are mindset coaches, you need to meet it with Marie and her team. <laughs> and like mindset is totally different than helping someone through trauma. Would you not agree? Yes, I, I totally agree. And that's why there's three of us. And I think that's what it makes our program amazing. Because I I, I had this idea for this program years ago, but I knew I, I couldn't do it alone. I don't think I wanted to do it alone either because it's not just, it's not just, I call myself the mind piece or like the bridge between the mind and the body. And then there's Dania, who's the functional health coach. She's the body piece. And then Krista, who's the ontological mindset coach. She's the soul piece because you're a whole body, just like holistic health, right? 
And so I don't know all the answers for all the women, you know, I have my own piece for my own stories that I do know about. I don't know as much about the gut as Dania does. Dania is amazing. She knows everything about the body. And I didn't even realize you can heal anxiety through just healing the gut if you're too uh, pittered out from going through the mind perspective. And then Krista will bring in that soul piece, just like you were saying earlier, like what lights you up in this life? Like, like how can you think differently about your thoughts and emotions? Because all of those together are so crucial. It's not just one thing. I think we need to give women the choices of what, what speaks to them. So that's my favorite thing about the Unbound Women, Marie, is that you guys are in your zone of genius. And when we step out of it, we do harm. And so I love that you're like, no, this is my zone. I can really zone in on this and make changes in your life. And I love that you were talking about Dania and Krista, that, like what their zones are, because it is holistic and it is whole body. And if you fix one thing, there's a lot, I'm telling you, there's a lot more work to be done because when <laughs> I tell you it takes a village, I'm not joking. I go yeah. to more than one coach because I know, like I get specialty people in that field to work with me on it. And would you not agree with me that there's no place of perfect health or wellness or perfection? that this is a beautiful journey. And once we've taken away one trauma and moved past that and we're feeling better, we're being more active, there's still a lot of work to be done. Yes, there, there's always, there's no one-stop shop. Um, I always tell people um, that they are, the own, they are their own operators of their bodies, their nervous systems. And we are just there to help them clear the path, basically, because I think everyone in their own right is their own expert. Like you do know the answers, but sometimes you're just a little bit clouded and you just need a little support and a little bit information to help you get to the point of where you're going into that journey. Because a lot of what, what anxiety is, what we talk about is that it's just a disconnection from your body. And when you're disconnected from who you are, you don't trust yourself. And so we really want to empower women to be their own guides and not look outside of themselves for all those answers and to look inside themselves and like trust themselves and what they need, like trust your gut, basically. I think that is a beautiful statement. Um, so we were talking a little earlier about what kind of women come to you to, to work with the, the group of you. Who are those women that, that are like really finding amazing success working with you? Yeah, the women that we're really finding that are finding uh, some amazing success with us are those that um, those ambitious women that just kind of feel like there's something holding them back from reaching that next level. Because I was always fiercely driven, I believe in my life. But there was just a lot of layers that held me back from reaching that potential and like realizing that actually there's no ceiling here that I can go farther than I think I can basically. So even if that's like starting your own business, which I love, or, you know, just working in your career, or being the best mom you want to be, you know, making choices for your family. It's that basically just going to the next level of what you're thriving for. I love it. And by the way, we all want to do that. We don't want to be stuck. We have like life's short. It's beautiful. Sure. I mean, sure. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you're stuck, we were just talking about this earlier, but if you're stuck for just one second, that's one second too long. So um, another thing is, where, do, where would people find you if they're like, wow, I, I've been dealing with this for a really long time, or I know I can be so much more, or I, I keep hitting the same roadblock. I keep building my business until I get here. I keep getting in a relationship until I get here, and then it all falls apart every single time. I'm telling you, if that is happening, you don't need to be looking at what's wrong with everyone else. It's something inside that you are blocking or that you're not releasing that keeps only getting you so far and right. then it all falls apart. So where would they like find you to start working with you? Yeah, um, many ways. Try to make it easy. <laughs> so we actually have a, a group on Facebook that's free for all women. It's called Anxiety and Gut Pain Support Group. And through that group, we've just tried to create a safe community um, that builds upon resources and we just kind of have some laughs and share personal stories on there too. Um, but I really wanted to create a safe place for women to talk about what's going on in their lives, basically re regarding anxiety and gut pain. Um, because I read this crazy study in 2016 that 72% um, of the women in America um, have digestive issues. 
And then two out of three of them don't even tell their friends about those problems. And so we're living in a world where we're all just keeping these secrets inside. And so I know that really well because I did that for so, like my friends had no idea that I was so sick. Um, and that just made me even feel worse inside because I kept that secret and I couldn't share it with anyone. Um, so we have that free group and then, um, we're on Instagram at unbound underscore women underscore where I, I share a lot of, um, kind of in funny ways about what's going on in your body, um, kind of education wise. And then we have a website at www.unboundwomen.us and you can find us on there and click the links, um, to, uh, join our masterclass basically and get on our list. Um, we also have an emailing list through that too, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. Well, Marie, first of all, I'm so grateful that you have a free group. Here's why. I think it's so important when you want to work with somebody and you know that there's something that you need to work on, that we get an opportunity to work with them through a free group like this, where we get to know them, start building that relationship and be like, yeah, this is the right person for me to, you know, reach out to for help. So I love that you're doing that. So it's free. You have no excuses. Get in there. If you just are sitting as an observer and absorbing until you have that, you, that courage to speak out and start sharing your truth. I'm assuming that those groups are pretty monitored. So there's no like bashing or. No. Yeah. We have rules and we monitor them. There's three of us. So yeah, we don't leave space for any bullying or kind of nature like that. For sure. So it's a total safe space for you to go. And if you, again, you're going to hear so many stories that are so familiar to yours and you're going to know I am not alone in this. There are other people struggling with the same thing. So I highly recommend that you join that Facebook group. And of course, we always put all of our guest links in here so you can easily connect with them. I just want you to push a button and be in that space of healing. So I love that. And I'm definitely going to refer a lot of people to you because I work as a mindset coach and I do a lot of RTT, which is rapid transformational therapy to help remove blocks. And when sometimes when I'm removing a block, what it does is go to a really traumatic part of their life that they push so deep that they just either thought it was not a big deal in my life until they revisit it. Mm -hmm. And then I have to move them on to somebody who works more with trauma to mm -hmm. um, now that it's brought up, like I want, don't want to leave them without that healing journey because that is not my space. So I love that, that we connected and I can refer people to you. And I love that you're the whole body, you're thinking about the gut mind connection, the gut spirit connection. And so I think that's amazing. So we've gone over tapping. You don't do MDR, somebody else does it. Is that what you said? Well, I, I also have a therapy practice outside of this um, business, you know, because I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I just love helping people. So I love doing EMDR, but I can only do it in my state with somebody that's in Oregon, basically where I live. Um, so I can't help all, all the people I want to in the world. Maybe someday that'll change. Um, but EMDR is, uh, stands for Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing. And basically, you think about it like we all have memories that are traumatic to us. That just means when we recall them, they create like a bee sting in our body, like a sensation, like our chest hurts or we get that pit in our stomach when we recall it. It's like maybe a teacher um, yelled at you in front of the class when you were really young. And you remember that now at like, you know, the age of 35 and you, you feel embarrassed right now. And so your, your survival brain is living in the past, basically. And it doesn't, hasn't, it, it never, your nervous system never got to a point to feel safe. And so what EMDR does is that it helps you um, bilaterally stimulating. So that means left to right or right to left through eyes or tapping movements. You can reprocess those bee stings and put them into the correct part of the brain that's just like a filing cabinet. So it takes away that this means something about me. Oh, it doesn't actually mean about anything about me. So it's kind of like I hear a lot of people describe it going from like very zoomed in telephoto, like this happening to me and it was horrible. And then all of a sudden you're seeing like the wide angle perspective of, of other things you maybe didn't notice that happened in that memory. And so it might not just change the way you feel about it. Like you can still feel like that was terrible. That happened to me, of course, but you're going to have a different perspective of it doesn't mean anything about me that that happened. Like I'm not a bad person, you know, 
I'm okay. I'm safe now. So you'll definitely be able to maybe respond differently from it because it did happen. It's part of our journey. Mm -hmm. But here's the other thing. I don't know if you recognize this, but most people who I work with, when I'm removing blocks, it's from their childhood, like from the ages of, I don't know, three, four, two, seven, eight. And it's when we see things as a child, they are so much bigger. Do you remember how big Santa Claus was? Or you remember getting the biggest chocolate chip cookie at the store? And now you go to get that cookie because you could think of it as a child and they hand it to you like, what is this? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. this is what I remember everything's so much different that we think of as a child. And when you look back at it as an adult, no longer dependent on other people and, you know, you mm -hmm. have more control and, and more knowledge. It changes now the way it affects your, your system and your body. And um, so I think it's super important that we reach out to people like Marie and to her unbound women group of women, because <laughs> I think that when we start releasing that power inside of us and finding our voice again, the change we create in the world is generational. We are raising daughters, we'll mm -hmm. teach you a son, <laughs> the power of a voice to speak up and to start creating that change. And I know they're gonna teach that to my grandchildren and my great grandchildren and so on down the road. So get yes. as healthy as we can and as mentally you know, prepared and in a good space, that's good for us, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually love telling people it's, it's not your fault what happened to you in the past, but it is your responsibility what you do with it. Well, I want to finish yeah. this show with something so beautiful that I found on your website. So I went to her website before this, and I'm always looking for a quote of something they say, and they have this really beautiful video of the three of them kind of introducing who they are and what they do. And they have this quote at the end, it is each of us is born to bring something new into the world that has never existed. And I think that is, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it because we are, even though we feel like we don't have a powerful journey, I'm telling you, you do. You will come in contact with somebody at some point in your beautiful life, however mm -hmm. long or short it is, that will create change in that other person because you have something new, new unique that doesn't exist in anyone else. So I love that quote and it's what we'll be posting in our show notes. Marie, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. Oh, it was so much fun. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Oh My Health There Is Hope podcast. Make sure to visit Jana's website, bestholisticlife.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, or listen there so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that'll help too. Let's change the world together, one health expert at a time. Looking forward to seeing you next time.